We're good. Okay, so today, guys, we have something very unusual for you. Um, not going to lie, I'm going to tell you this is close to my heart and close to the heart of all of the guest experts that I have with me today. Now, you know, we're weight loss and wellness, right? So we know you love it when we talk about recipes. Uh, you even love it when we talk about the mindset relative to you achieving your goals, overcoming your obstacles, and making weight loss and wellness even easier. Today, we're going to talk about something very specifically related to wellness and keeping stress down, and that's money management. Okay, look, money management sounds really boring, but it sounds a lot more fun when I say money-saving mavens. It sounds a lot more fun when I say, we can show you how to get paid to shop. It sounds a lot more fun when I show you how to eat for free. What if we show you how to live for free? I mean, there, there's a lot of good information today. As I have talked to these beautiful women, I have been blown away. Like I knew they all knew their stuff. But as I talked to each one of them individually, I was like, okay, seriously. So we're going to take you guys through a whole journey in the time we have together from how, in fact, to save money on food, how to find the best food, the highest quality food at the best price. We're going to talk about how to save on cookware, houseware, apparel, accessories. Uh, we're going to go into how to make money after you save money. Uh, like I said, live for free, eat for free. Um, hobbies, really healthy hobbies that are super inexpensive that actually help you lose weight. And I'm not talking about exercise. So let me just give you an itty bitty, itty bitty backstory as to why I was so excited about putting a class together on money saving and money saving that can even become money making. And that is because the way I was raised was to be very wise with money. I certainly learned it under the term wise stewardship and coupons, sales and coupons at that time were cut them out of the paper coupons. And the way I was raised was to look at what coupons we had compared to what sales were showing up in the sale flyers, also paper at the time. And when we compared the coupons and the sale flyer items, that's what we bought. And then we planned our meals from there. A uh, very, very frugal way of living. Um, pretty much always had the food that we wanted, but again, we prepared our meals from saving money. Uh, there was always saving money on apparel. Uh, as long as I can remember clear back, and, and actually, quite honestly, I'm doing it to this day. Well, if you can walk into a store, I'm doing it to this day. And that's to walk into a store and go all the way back to the back where the clearance items are, hunting down the clearance item sections, a fun thing to do, and then just seeing what's on that clearance item rack. Now, again, that's when you can go into a store, but now things are online the exact same way, clearance item, etc. So today we're going to talk about how to save money on your eating, how to save money on your food, but how to save money in every other area of your life as well. At the time of this recording, we're headed into holiday gift giving. So we're going to talk about gifts that have been purchased very specifically with money saving in mind and somebody absolutely loving the gift. So, so much to cover today. And we're going to start very simply with the money that you can save on food, ways that... Uh, where you can find the food at the best price that is the highest quality, ways that you can shop at grocery stores differently probably than the way that you're shopping right now, and also then spilling over into, like I say, cookware, houseware, accessories, apparel, you name it. So, Bethy, this is you. Now, guys, you know Beth from these master classes for a while. And you have known that she's incredible at preparing dishes, and she is. She's got a passion for health, a passion for wellness, a passion for eating clean. But what you don't know about her is she has an off the charts passion for saving money. Like what she's gonna tell you near the end of our call is how she's turned it into a game, actually. Uh, but for now, Beth, let's just dive in with saving what you and I talked about. Gosh, we talked about uh, M perks. We talked about Kroger. We talked about sales, coupons, how uh, Aldi's has cleaner food for far better prices. We talked about surveys, restaurant apps. We're just going to talk about all of that. Right okay. Now. All right. 
So one of the things that um, I like to do is always get a discount on something. So when we shop at Meyer, you always have to have the Meyer app uh, or the MPerk app. So it's their in-store thing and you go in and you pick your coupons. Every grocery store that I shop in has something. So Target has it, Meyer has it, Kroger has it. Aldi doesn't have an app, but we're going to talk about Aldi in a second. One of the things that I have found with the grocery store apps are that you're going to get coupons right there on your phone. You don't have to touch anything inside the store. And they also track your shopping, which could sound a little weird, but that gives you extra discounts, right? So in the mail, because of M perks, my sisters were getting these coupons that I wasn't getting. So I signed up to take the survey for Meyer, and now they're sending me bigger coupons than even what's in the M perk app. So, so, so with, Beth, let me let me interject something right there, guys. What she means by tracking is you have certain things that you're buying regularly, right? Well, so they're watching your buying behavior. So with one thing, and, and we'll go with M perks right now, you're going to get savings. But because they're watching what you're buying, and when you go through the site, those two can marry now. So they're watching your buying patterns and sending you even greater discounts on what they know you're buying. That's even greater savings. They're giving you an incentive to keep shopping with them because it's a cutthroat market, right? So we do most of our shopping at Aldi because what we have found is that Aldi, if you take even just like, let's talk about pumpkin pie spice for a second. At Meyer, it's probably $2 more expensive than what it is at Aldi for an organic brand. So Aldi has these little, I brought a little show and tell, a little sneak peek flyer that my husband and I, every time we're at Aldi, we grab the sneak peek to know what's coming next week. Like it's just, again, kind of a game for us. But this is where you're going to be able to see all the different stuff. The other um the, the like they have what are called Meyer fines. So they are like short term deals. But the, the biggest thing I love about Aldi is that they have their own line of organic foods and the prices are great. So organic beef, organic bison, organic chicken, organic chips, uh, organic bread. So you can eat very cleanly. They have organic vegetables, organic milk. So as you can tell, um, I'm a big organic person, if you didn't know already. And uh, the prices are amazing at Aldi. Now, you can't go in and use an app, but they spoil you with their checkout because it's so fast and speedy that you kind of end up and when you're in another store feeling like why can't they take a note from Aldi because they're so fast um, so Beth, they, let's let's jump back to M perks okay let's talk okay. about savings so M perks Target Kroger's one of the things I want to make sure folks understand is that when you key in to get the deal so you key the coupon in to get the deal that's where as long as you've gone to the site to register the buying pattern gets rewarded right? And you get an even yes. bigger deal. So let's just use Myers, And it's the same guys for a lot of grocery stores, Kroger's, you get on the loyalty program, the perk program. Okay. You key in the coupon code. And as long as you have gone to the site also, that's where the super big deals happen. You're shopping right, for Beth? coupons. Yeah. You're, you're choosing your coupons. So, okay. um, if you weren't using that, you're walking away from a lot of money. And it's so simple money. to just have it. And it, it's a lot of um, a lot of things that you'll just go in and pick. Same thing for Kroger, same thing for Target. You're choosing what discounts you want from what they have to offer. Those can be stacked with 
uh, other coupons. Like if let's, you have let's save deal coupon. stacking to later. Let's hold on and save that for later. Talk to me a little bit about surveys, uh, uh, restaurant surveys. Restaurant surveys. I love um, Arby's, Wendy's. They all like to know what people want. So they send out surveys if you go into their website and opt to be one of their uh, customers that fills out the survey, they'll send you um, things where they're like, hey, test out this name of this product. Like, do you like the name of this sandwich? Which one do you like better? What they do is pay you back for that. Arby's sends coupons for like 50% off your entire order or 40% off your entire order. And you just show it on your phone as appreciation for helping them with their market research. So Wendy's does the same thing. Uh, and Wendy's has a great app uh, where they give you discounts just by signing up for an app uh, or all of the ones they give you more discounts if you order on foot on the on the and, app. And that, and and that I was in. just gonna jump beyond fast food. All restaurants, if you order through the app, right? Yeah, there's a greater savings or yeah, free stuff. Always there always is an incentive to have them be able to track you um, because they've, they've got your information. They want to use that market research, so they're going to incentivize it. Okay, so listen, Nina, we're going to now jump to, we've saved money on food. Uh, we know where to go to get the best stuff for the best price. We know how to double up. We know how to help them track our buying patterns so we can be rewarded and save even more money. That's food. And, and as, as we didn't get a chance to mention, we may come back to it, that applies to everything, guys. So it can apply to accessories, apparel, cookware, you, you name it. But what Nina has been able to do, um, she moved. So Nina sold her home, amazing, amazing cottage, bungalow, just, the, just one of the most amazing homes I've ever been in my life. And she had it totally decorated uh, to go with the era. I mean, the, the home was just phenomenal. But when she moved and built a brand new home, she needed brand new stuff because the bungalow stuff wasn't going to go in the brand new home. So Nina, I don't want to take anything away from you. Let's talk about that story and what ensued uh, to result in the amazingly beautifully decorated brand new home that you now have. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Our house uh, where we were two hours from here was built in 1927, bungalow, historic home. We were in historic walks and garden walks, but we knew when we moved, we knew when we built a new house, wouldn't it fit the same style? So we sold nearly all of our furniture. Uh, not 100%, but almost. And so we had to start all over. Now, could I afford to buy all brand new furniture? Yeah, probably if I wanted to do it, but I wanted bargains, um, but I didn't want to look like bargains. So that's when I found Marketplace, Facebook Marketplace. In the past, a lot of people have used uh, Craigslist I like Marketplace better because there's a person behind it. Craigslist, you don't see who the person is behind it. So I became a queen of Marketplace. Now I also use Pinterest. Uh, Pinterest because I began to develop, okay, what's my new style? You've got to understand your style before you just go out and buy. So let me give you one example and then Donna, you can lead me where you want it to go. Um, one of the things I needed was a coffee table. I had the cutest coffee table, thought I was going to take it, didn't have room to put it in the truck, so I didn't, but I needed a coffee table. Now, the beauty about searching on Marketplace is when you type in the search bar, coffee table, you get probably a hundred different options as opposed to going to a store, and maybe you'd have a few options. And so that's what I began to do. I, I began to find things knowing that even if I found a coffee table I wanted didn't mean I was going to get it because I'm also the kind of person if they list it for $60 I might say would you take 40 would you take 50 and if you play that kind of game oftentimes you can lose it if it's a really hot item. Nina let's talk about uh I know I asked you when we were prepping for this today um you got a round face clock for $60 that would have retailed at about how much? 
for three hundred dollars easy easy and a nightstand you paid forty dollars for that on wayfair you told me would have been around 250 dollars right um lamps for 15 dollars that you said would have been about how much i just bought a lamp actually it was a new one and it was uh, over 300 dollars. so wow yeah. wow so guys do the math on this okay so paying 15 for something that's worth 300 paying um, 60 for something that's worth 400. Now you may say, well, Don, I'd never go buy a clock for $400. Okay, but you're getting a clock that's worth $400 for 60. Now I know that some of you may not go to the nth degree of redecorating right down to a couch, uh, but Nina did. Nina, you got a full leather couch set on Marketplace for a thousand dollars. Now, granted, that's not two or three hundred; it's a thousand. But how much was that leather set worth, Nina? It was a full couch, a love seat, a chair, and an ottoman. Really high quality leather, easily, and because I've already been in some of the furniture stores here, easily eight thousand dollars. Eight thousand dollars. So again, she's a marketplace maven. <laughs> I would say. Uh, I know when you said. Once you started to furnish your home and decided this is the way we're going to do it, you really just made a list of what do I need? So we're kind of giving you guys the system here. Nina said, okay, what do I need? Then she would go to Marketplace and she would begin to search those items that she needed. Now, she has recently learned that local shop is something that she's choosing over Marketplace. Nina, can you tell us a little bit about local shop? Yeah, I like to support local businesses, if that's what you're talking about. So... Um, yeah, and, and I'm in Indiana, and we are still open. Um, you know, of course, we've got to wear masks and everything, but we can go into stores. And so it's always fun to go into one. Um, I just recently ordered to have a window box, a winter window box, on front of my house. Now, it's not something I would have picked on Marketplace. But one thing's done, I didn't tell you the other day, and it's just coming to me right now, Oftentimes in many communities, there are now Facebook groups that are free groups. So in other words, somebody wants to give something away for free. You need to check out whether or not there's one locally uh, and you need to join that as well. Just know that those things go extremely quickly if it's anything worth anything, um, but it's worth paying attention to those as well. So again, guys, uh, I think that it's good for us right now to have things that lift us up and that are good for our attitude and our outlook. And sprucing up your surroundings is one of those things that can make life feel a little bit easier and a little bit better. And these are ways you can do it for free. Now, I want to move into talking about how to save money, but then turn that into making money or at least costing nothing. Now you guys are seeing via the Zoom call that three of us are in separate locations, but the fourth person and the person we're gonna talk about saving money turned into making money is sitting right here with me. So Cass, let's talk about the things that you buy, and I say primarily it's for the kids, all of the things that you buy that you then turn around into at least breaking even or making money. Okay. I just want to tag on something Nina said because it made me think of two sites, FreeCycle and Nextdoor. Uh, FreeCycle is one of those things, FreeCycle.org, I think. It's one of those things where people are giving stuff away. And if you can get there before anybody else, it's yours. Um, Nextdoor is like a, a sort of networking type of neighborhood site where people are giving things away for free or they're selling them at a discount. And it's a lot of other stuff too. You'll see like, recommendations for air conditioning guys and things like that. So um, those are two sites that I like to use. Um, but then coming back to Marketplace, like Nina was talking about, I use Marketplace all the time, especially for kids stuff because kids grow very fast. And if you buy clothes and shoes and toys and all that stuff brand new, you're gonna spend a lot of money and they're gonna outgrow it pretty quickly. So what I like to do is try to save on buying something either brand new that somebody didn't use that they're selling at a discount or I'll get something that's gently used um, but still in really good shape because 
the previous kid didn't have a chance to really do much to it before they outgrew it. So I'm saving money on the front end, buying things at a discount. And then again, like going to the clearance section at Target and things, just trying to get um, to where I'm not paying full retail price for anything. And then you can turn around on Marketplace and you can sell something. So if you bought something brand new and your kids didn't use it that much or you know, for yourself, if you bought something brand new and you found out it wasn't really gonna match or it didn't fit you that great or whatever, you can turn around and sell it on Marketplace and get a little bit of money out of it. Maybe the store return window has closed so you can't return it and get the money back, which I always make sure that I return things. That's another thing too, because stores make a lot of money on purchases that people buy and then they don't use it, but they just never get around to returning it. So the item might get tossed or donated to Goodwill and you know, stores make money that way. So uh, again, Facebook marketplace, resell your stuff. So if you bought something brand new and you don't use it, you can sell it. If you bought something new and it didn't get used that much, you can sell it. If you bought something used and you didn't use it that much and it's still in good shape, you can turn around and resell it. So I've done that with a lot of toys, especially. You can buy something that maybe in the store is $25 new. You can buy it for 10. And then if you don't use it that long, you can turn around and sell it for $10 again. And then basically you just got to use that toy for a little while for free. So uh, talking about, as we're gonna wind this up a little bit later, we're gonna talk about how to make this stuff a game. Uh, you know, Chas challenged herself to sell it, always sell it for more. Than, than she bought it for. And uh, and her husband said to her, look, if you sell it for what you bought it for, it was free, you know? So again, I, these things, these guys are so good at this stuff, you guys, it's second nature to them. But I'm watching all three of them. I'm watching Beth, I'm watching Nina, I'm watching Chas. And they're all getting ideas from each other or they're confirming and they're shaking their head, yes. So, I mean, you could literally... And this is kind of where we're going to wind up when we get done. If you wanted to, you could almost live for free. Now, coming off of buying on Marketplace or, or buying on any one of the other sites that Chas mentioned and then turning around and selling it back, so you virtually have had it for next to nothing, Chas is going to talk to us about eating for free. For a long time in her life, she talked about being a secret shopper, a mystery shopper, and, it, and not just eating for free, but a lot of other activities as well. But we're going to go back to food, right? Because we all know we have food in common. So we're going to go back to food, and she's going to share some of the mystery shopping and secret shopping stuff that goes on. And listen, you can go to a physical restaurant. If we're talking about food, that's what she always used to do, but it certainly still applies to takeout and it applies to online as well. Everything that was offline is now online if it wasn't already. So Chas, how about if you talk to us about eating for free? Yep. For a long time, I did mystery shopping. Um, I don't have as much time now because you are getting discounts or you're doing, you're getting something for free, but then you, you put quotes around free because with mystery shopping and like what Beth was talking about with surveys, your time is involved to go and make the report afterwards or to take the survey or whatever. So they are getting something from you. It's just not money. So you're saving money, but you're investing a little bit of time. So with mystery shopping, you can sign up for a lot of different companies. Um, Ipsos is one, Shopmetric is one. Uh, there's just tons and tons of these companies. Um, Ipsos is I-P-S-O-S. And um, there's just so many. I can't even think of all of them right now. There's a million companies. So you basically sign up with that company. You're an independent contractor and they send you emails with different companies or restaurants or fast food places that are looking for a mystery shopper to come in and tell them how they're doing. So you get like a, a reimbursement for a purchase. So maybe you get $10 reimbursement so that you can go in and buy a, a dinner and then, you know, they'll pay for that dinner or, you know, up to $10 or whatever it is. And then when you go fill out the survey, you know, they, they can pay you pretty quick. A lot of times it used to take a long time for them to mail you checks, but now everything's electronic. They just put money right in your PayPal account and it's pretty cool. So, but not just with food too. Um, I kind of making it a game. I liked to try and do mystery shopping for things that I was going to do anyway. So I mystery shopped all kinds of places like uh, oil changes or opening a new account at a bank 
or hotels. So things that I was going to be doing anyhow, and I had to spend that money anyhow, I was either getting money back because I was being paid for my survey, or I was getting the cost of that reimbursed. So that saved me a ton. And what I realized is, you know, you could spend a lot of time doing that if you wanted to. If you're maybe you're not working outside the home and you just want to pick up, you know, 15 or 20 hours worth of extra income during the week, you could definitely do that. But not all the jobs pay a ton. So you have to be kind of selective with which jobs you're choosing, which is why I decided to just do things that I would have been doing anyway, just to save myself the time. So I got, I got that from her more than anything else. When she said it was like living for free and in the case of restaurants eating for free because she was going and getting stuff she would have gotten or would have been doing anyway and again i think it, you're probably at the point where you could google mystery shopping secret shopping because there are so many options out there now i know we talked about getting paid to shop so beth i know this is just one of your most favorite things to talk about. So let's go into getting paid to shop. All right. So there is a uh, a site. It's, a, it's kind of an app called Rakuten. R-A-K-U-T-A-N, I believe. Um, and you may have seen commercials for it. And it kind of sounds too good to be true because that's what they do. You get paid to shop at tons of stores. You can um, think about what you want, whether it's at Kohl's or Macy's, or there's just hundreds and hundreds of stores that the advertisers actually pay you to shop at them. So you're going to go to Rakuten, and then you type in whatever store you're thinking of, and each one has its own individual percentage back. Like Veterans Day was a little while ago and it was on the 11th. And so a ton of stores had 11% back that on top of whatever you spent, they give you 11% back. And any coupons that you had for that location as well, let's say it was Macy's, um, you know, Macy's has a lot of coupons out. Well, Rakuten knows all the coupons. So they actually apply the coupons. Same thing for Kohl's. And you can buy almost anything. Typically not food, but even FTD, car rentals are on there. Whatever you can almost think of is going to be covered on Rakuten. And they send you what they call a big fat check literally says on their big fat check. So on the envelope, it's like, here's your big fat check. So I've made a few hundred dollars shopping on Rakuten, even like if you wanted to buy a domain name, if you wanted to um, get something at Walmart, like it all stacks up. Now there's another thing that you can use before you go to Rakuten, which is Crazy Coupon Lady. So it's the crazy coupon lady and they give you all of the breakdowns for what's, what's happening on sale, what stores are having sales, what like Target, uh, Macy's, they'll break down everything that's going on. And uh, then you can go ahead and go, hey, I know these sales are coming. Oh, these are Black Friday sales because they give you all the pre Black Friday stuff get your information from the crazy coupon lady, then go to Rakuten, buy your stuff with your discounts that you already knew are happening and, and then the ones you didn't even know that are happening. Okay, so listen, I'm gonna slow you down because you have gone into deal stacking and this is so good. So I'm listen, sorry. no, no, ahead. I know you're great at this and everybody's loving it. So let's back up because you're describing a system. So I'm gonna kind of give you some puzzle pieces to the system. And I'm going to ask you then to put them in order for us because you are giving pure gold right now. So one, Rakuten pays you to shop. Hundreds of stores, hundreds. I mean, you talked to me about goods and tech and pet supplies and apparel, just hundreds of stores, right? Um, and that's Rakuten where you get the big fat check. 
right? But mm -hmm. then you also said because there is this um, there is this uh, there this exchange between software platforms that if you go to Macy's site to buy something, Rakuten Rakuten will say, "Oh, we're going to reward you for that." Or the other way around, if you buy at Macy's, you'll get a reward for that. Like like they they um, interact with each other. You got to right? go to Rakuten first. They'll okay. apply whatever. But what about discount. Crazy Coupon Lady? Should I go to Crazy Coupon Lady? Because that was going to be the, the third piece. Go to Crazy Coupon Lady to see everything that's happening, right? So go there so first. Go there go first. Crazy Coupon Lady first. Okay. See what's going on out there. Like it's going to tell you stores that are having their sales and what, like it's going to tell you, hey, Tide's on sale at Target for this amount, or you can go get this free at Target by spending this much. Um, and then if it's anything that any stores that are utilizing Rakuten, then that's where you're going to, you, you got your information from Crazy Coupon Lady, then you went to um, Rakuten and decided, hey, I'm going to shop. Then you pick your store, so you'll be able to see what discounts, and then they send you that big fat check. Um, if you're new to Rakuten, you get a like sign up bonus. If you're new to Rakuten and you're referred by somebody, you and that person get a bonus. So like, let's say just for instance, you went to my Facebook page and clicked my Rakuten link, you'd get $40 if you used Rakuten and bought something. So that's their like initial bonus. It used to be 10 bucks. So right now it's 40. So that's something to think about. And again, if you go to my Facebook page, I put the link up there. Um, just a hint. You get 40, I get 40. Sorry, <laughs> self-promotion. Um, but that's how they pay you. So then if you have friends that you want, so not only are you getting paid for shopping, if you let your friends in on the secret of Rakuten, then they're going to get, your friends are going to get a discount. They're going to get money and you're going to get money too, because they want more people utilizing it because it's advertising. So the advertisers are giving you the payment. So Beth, if somebody is brand, brand, brand new though, I mean, like not gone to a site, not gone to Rakuten, not used Crazy Coupon Lady, not not used any of the exchanges that you've talked about. I mean, even go back to M Perks and Kroger's and just you love deal stacking. It's something that you you just have a great time with. So give us now, even going back to what you talked about earlier in our conversation, give us the best order. If you can just back yourself up, give a newbie the best order for first, second, third, fourth, fifth, what should somebody do who's looking to really save the most amount of money possible with the life that they're living within 20, 30, listen to your body or somebody who's trying to get well and not necessarily just food. I'm just asking you for to give us the pieces in order. Okay, so if there is an app at a grocery store that you shop in, don't disregard it it is going to save you money. So if there is some kind of M Perk, Kroger Plus, Target Red, whatever, if your stores have a an app, utilize it because there will be discounts. So that would be the first thing. If you're shopping local, start there for discounts. Okay. okay. When you are on Facebook or shopping or looking just um, um, just searching things on the internet and you want to find out where the best deals are. I would start by looking at crazy the crazy coupon lady because she's got everything broken down and a lot how, how do you think I learned this stuff? It actually pick up a lot of information from the crazy coupon lady people. So ladies, I'm sure there's some men in there somewhere. <laughs> um, and then I would get that information and then get signed up at Rakuten. It's free. You're not spending anything. They just want to give you money so you can shop. But if there's like Macy's, 
look and see what they have and and get on their app so everything these days has an app so it's just important to do a little research figure out what you want and then this is in this day and age you don't have to go through the newspaper you don't have to look through the sales flyers because you can get everything by going to whatever stores.com and they will give you like the most recent sales flyer crazy coupon lady tends to give you all of that kind of encapsulated for for each store so get an app for anything that you're looking at look for an app first whether you're going to go to a restaurant see if they have an app chili's um applebee's uh texas roadhouse they all have discounts when you sign up just tell them your birthday you'll get a free meal like you know Chaz was saying if there's something free or discounted to be had i'm gonna find it <laughs> <laughs> so talk about a game uh when nina and i were having this pre-conversation to prepare for this class um she told me about a game that she plays now listen because this is a game that pays big and it doesn't pay big in monopoly money. It pays big in a mortgage paper that you can set on fire because your mortgage is paid. Nina actually looked at the deals that she was getting and the money that she was saving to become debt free. So Nina, I'm gonna have you talk about that a little bit if you would please. Yeah, you know, I worked at the University of Notre Dame for eight years. I was in the purchasing department. The reason I was there is my daughter could go there tuition free, came out with a free, uh, with a Notre Dame degree and no debt. So one thing that we were always, always, always talking about in purchasing was saving money. And I was, one of the things I was responsible for was uh, purchasing printing at the university. And uh, we would have uh, certain rules that if then something was a certain price, we had to get three quotes. And then they'd say, well, how can I save money? And I would say, just don't print, easiest. So it's the same thing whenever you're trying to get debt free. My husband and I bought our first house uh, and then we sold it five years later. And at the age of, of 25, we bought the house that we just moved from a few years ago. We paid that house in four years. We paid it off. We lived there for 41 years. And then two years ago, we, we bought this house that we built. This house was $100,000 more than we sold our first house for. We paid it off in six months. The reason, the way you can do that is just don't buy. And do everything you can to put every bit of money onto that mortgage. And in a very short period of time, it's done. So Nina, I observe something about you though. I have been around you for a long time and I have been to your home, which again, guys, is absolutely exquisitely gorgeously decorated. Now what Nina, let's just go back a minute to what we talked about a little bit ago. What Nina taught me is that, which we've already shared with you, she would think about, she would look around her house and she would say, what do I need? Oh, I need a coffee table. I need an end table. I need a clock. I need a couch. And she would go searching on Marketplace. But she also told me that she would go to Pinterest and she would create boards, right? So that she learned pretty quickly her style that she liked. So that when she looked for the coffee table or the end table or what have you, she knew what kind of style she was looking for. She, her house doesn't look like hodgepodge, not even close. It looks like a custom designer did it. But Nina, you're saying just don't spend. But what you really did do, and I've been to your house, is you spent, but you spent very, very wisely. And talk, let's talk about literally, I know it may seem obvious to you, but it isn't to most people. When you went to Marketplace and bought a lamp for $15 that would sell normally for $300, you had a little game that you were playing with yourself with putting that savings toward the debt. So let's talk about that. Okay, I'm not sure I understand the game. The game is put as much on there as you possibly can. So let me go, let me go back to our first house. Um, the mortgage was in that first house because we saved a lot and put it, it was only 23,000. But when you're 25 years old and you're only making $6 an hour, that's a lot of money. 
We never went out to meet. We never bought anything new. We never did anything but pay on the house. Um, very similar to this particular house. Yes, I did in the early days. I needed to do, do something. I need to furnish. But every bit that I saved, we put on the house. Is that the game you're looking for, Don? That's the one. That's the one. So, guys, when Nina would look at what it would have cost compared to what she actually spent on it, she took the amount of money that she saved and applied that toward her mortgage. Now, what I'm sure you guys know, but just in case you don't know, anytime you pay a dollar over your mortgage payment goes toward the principal. The interest is only in there one time a month. So anything you pay over. So even if you save $15 and you go put $15 on that mortgage, or you save $40, you could put 40 or 200 and you could put 200. It's taking your principal down. So yes, Nina, that was the exact game. So when you bought a lamp for 15, that would have normally been 300, you went and put your savings toward your debt. Absolutely. Because I love being debt free. When you're debt free, you can do things you a lot of people cannot do. And so being debt free is always something that I love doing. Um, so in fact, we could do a whole um, masterclass on that because there are certain strategies that I did use we don't have time for today. Well, I'll tell you, um, one of the folks that couldn't be with us today was Chris, who has got techniques like nobody's business in making credit cards work for you. And I'm not talking about charging on them. I'm talking about he remodeled his house and spent $40,000. And instead of paying the interest, if he wanted to take 18 months to pay, instead of paying interest, he got the credit card to pay him. I mean, it's just phenomenal. So between his credit card knowledge and your get out of debt knowledge, we could do a whole other masterclass, which would be amazing. Now, we're talking about Nina paying off her mortgage, which is amazing, money-saving, money-making knowledge. But let's now pivot that back to chastity because I want her to share with us about living for free. We've talked about being paid to shop. We've talked about getting out of debt. Uh, we've talked about eating for free. But I want Chas to share with you guys uh, the, the setup she created for living for free. This is something anybody could do. Not everybody is willing, but I would say the ones that are smart are willing and they're making money and living for free. So Chas, let's talk about the uh, triplex and the other things that you've done. Okay, so when I was looking for a home, I looked for a really long time because I am a very educated consumer and I know that just going out and buying something, you're usually gonna not get exactly what you want or you're gonna spend too much money. So you have to know what you want. You have to take your time finding it you have to wait for the right thing to come along. So that's what I did. And I eventually, after maybe five years or longer of looking, I found a triplex and I was like, oh, I think this might be it. The reason I thought it might be it is because I read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which was a game changer for me. And when I saw this triplex and I saw the price on it, I thought, wow, there are three units at this price. That's, you know, X dollars per unit. You know, that's a pretty good price. If you're thinking, you know, the standard house costs, say, $100,000, and then you're just going to pay on your mortgage. If you can get a triplex for $100,000 and rent out two spaces and live in one space, if you set your rent amount correctly, those two people can pay your mortgage for you, which is what I did. So I was living in one of the units. The other two units were rented. My mortgage was covered and you know expenses and stuff if I was able to. And then the best practice in that situation is to then also pay yourself rent. So you're taking the amount of money that you would be getting if someone else was living in the space that you're living in and you're putting it toward your mortgage. And I will say too, um, when you're paying your mortgage early, Make sure that your bank knows or your mortgage company knows that that extra money is going toward principal because sometimes you have to specify that with them or they're just going to throw money at the debt. So you have to walk in and say, I want this to apply to principal. So I did that. And um, then what I actually did was I turned around and I sold the triplex for more than I bought it for. So I lived there for free and then I made money on the proceeds of the sale. Uh, so that was uh, one way that I did that. And then what I realized is with the um, growing popularity of Airbnb and Verbo and sites like that, 
if I ever ended up with an empty unit, which sometimes happens, you know, that's normal in rental business. Sometimes you don't have a runner for a little while. I was doing um, short term furnished rentals on Airbnb and those people are willing to pay a premium because they don't have to bring their own furniture. They don't have to get utilities in their name. Um, so, and you know, that was like a single unit that I was doing that with. But what I have started to see on Airbnb is people were running out like a bedroom in their home. You know, maybe they had a three bedroom home and they had themselves and a roommate and they had this extra bedroom. So, you know, they would welcome people traveling from out of town to come and use that bedroom. Or maybe you have an apartment over your garage or a guest house or something like that. So there's a lot of different configurations on Airbnb. It's pretty cool to see people getting creative with their spaces and, you know, generating some extra income for themselves. So I will tell you that um, when we first started having this conversation, I was a Burbo vacation rental by owner. It's another Airbnb. It's another home away. Um, and that's what I would use when I would travel. The only time I would stay in a hotel is if I was by myself. Uh, but if I was with even one other person, I would get a Burbo vacation rental by owner. And as we began to talk through this, now it's very important for you to hear what I'm about to say. As Chas and I really began to talk through, look, this is how I always travel. She jumped on it like crazy. Well, guys, we live in a very blue collar, um, small, rural community. And you would think there would be no Airbnb options here as far as people wanting to rent. People want to rent all the time. Chas has got language that she uses. And if you have any, what, factories, hospitals, just anything at all, uh, uh, construction, anything at all that's got any kind of transient um, traffic to it, there's opportunity there. Now, again, you, you may dig the idea of renting out your whole house. There's so much money to be made, even right now, in this day and age, there's so much money to be made with Airbnb and Burbo that you might want to go stay with a friend or family member and rent out your house for a little while because the amount of money is crazy. And let me just give you a little hint about the amount of money. Uh, we have a condo that we were renting for $550. Uh, we went and looked for a long-term renter. We included utilities, but we capped them and got $950. Chas worked her magic with Airbnb, and it isn't that uncommon to get $2,100. Do the math on that. Now, again, as she said, if you have an extra bedroom that's got a bath, that's money. You can be as picky as you want to be with the people who come stay with you. So if you are renting out part of your home, you can be as picky as you want to be with them checking off the boxes. Uh, because I know some people go, oh, I don't want people staying with me that I don't know. That's fair. Uh, but there's money to be had there if that's something that you're interested in doing. Now, we've talked a lot. I mean, a lot. We've covered a lot of territory with money saving, money making, uh, and, and, and all the other plethora of things that we've talked about. But I want to really come back to something very specific to, well, these are two very specific things to you losing weight and, and building your wellness, becoming more well. One, is to have inexpensive hobbies that are healthy. Remember I mentioned this earlier, but I said it wasn't gonna be exercise. Inexpensive hobbies that are healthy are distractions. The distractions from eating the wrong foods, drinking the wrong drink, they're distractions from stress, they're good healthy outlets. And what we're gonna talk about right now with Nina is an inexpensive healthy hobby that she has. It's also relative to saving money, AKA inexpensive. But it's also relative to sending a psychological message to yourself that you're full, that you're fulfilled, that you're content. Nina has one of the most amazing hobbies that I've ever seen. She's passionate about tablescaping. So Nina, I'm just going to let you run with this one because I know you love talking about this. Yeah, so when we were going to sell our house two hours from where we're at now, um, I sold it ourselves. So I actually, I saved the, uh, the uh, fee from the, we sold it. Um, and the other person didn't even have a, a realtor either. So we sold, we saved both ends, but I needed to stage the house. And so I got to thinking, well, you know, one of the things to stage is the table. So I didn't even realize there was a term called tablescaping, um, but that's when I did find out about it. So fast forward, we moved a couple years ago I packed up some of those. So I would go to Goodwill. I would go to garage sales. 
I, I would get friends who gave me stuff. And so I would get table things. Now, the one thing about it is you don't want whole sets of anything. If you're going to be in tablescaping, trust me, you don't want anything. If you're in it like I am. So I only needed four of something, four dinner plates, four um, dessert plates, four goblets, four place settings of flatware, whatever. So fast forward to now, I'm going to someday, I'm going to check, but I probably have at least 70 different kinds of things. So two or three times a week, I set the table. Doesn't mean we're going to be eating at that table. However, I do, um, we do eat at that table oftentimes, but I might be a very small plate. That's okay. And then you eat less when you have a small plate. In fact, this morning I was at uh, my annual physical and the doctor looks at me and said, you've lost weight. I said, yeah, I have, even during COVID. Well, you got small plates, you don't eat very much, or if they're really pretty, you spend more time just enjoying that meal as opposed to eating so fast. So tablescaping, again, if, you, if you're like Beth and you go to her Facebook, you go to mine, you're gonna see a lot of my tablescapes that I've done. Uh, my husband has built a few shelves for me, but surprisingly enough, it doesn't take that much space. By the way, Donna, I have 21 different flatware sets. Not, not eight, not 12, four sets of, of a diff, 21 different ones. So Nina, let's really, I think it's worth mentioning again, there really is the, there's a psychology at work here. Now I know you love doing it. You love saving money. So you've taken two games, right? You love tablescaping and you love saving money and you go to thrift stores and Goodwill and marketplace, but there's a psycho psychological benefit here for somebody who wants to lose weight. And that's that the sense of being fulfilled. Like guys, I will tell you, if I order takeout food, I take it from that styrofoam container and I put it onto a plate with silverware because there's, there's that psychological benefit of enjoying the meal, of being fulfilled. So Nina, just a little bit of kind of wrap it up conversation, if you would, about the message that you think is being sent to your mind, to Eldon's mind, when you sit down at this beautiful table, or maybe even when you're setting the table. Let's just talk about that for a little bit. Yeah, you know, I would redecorate my house every week if I could. <laughs> I love decorating. Donna's right. I spend hours and hours on Pinterest. My, my suggestion to you is shut off the television. Shut it off. Because all that's on there is bad. And so when I'm setting a table, people will ask me, you know, what are you doing? What I, I, could be is the inspiration could be a new flatware that I bought. Or I went to Goodwill this week and I spent $1.50 dollar fifty to get these dessert plates. So it is the psychological sense of beauty, of interest, of, you know, and it's, it has nothing to do with COVID, has nothing to do with what happened on the election. It's just fun. It is a psychological benefit. So as we kind of sum this up, I'm gonna ask each one of you to give us either a takeaway or your best piece of advice, or if you were to sum up your advice, what it would be. Beth, I'm gonna start with you because I'm actually gonna give you your answer. <laughs> because if you said this once to me, you have said this so many times, and this is a theme, guys, that we're hearing. Beth said, look, I make a game out of it. I make a game out of it. Uh, if I were to go back, as because I took, different notes from different ones of you guys. Uh, the takeaway that I got in my conversation with Beth was I never pay full price for anything. <laughs> she goes, I make a game out of it. This is actually another inexpensive, healthy hobby. It's making a game out of saving money. So Beth, sum that up for us. Just you make a game out of it. Just just tell us about that. Um. Anytime uh, that I have, let's say a gift card or um, I, I won't go shopping if there is a place that takes coupons and I don't have the coupon. Like JCPenney has coupons, TJ Maxx doesn't. If I don't have that coupon, I'm not shop. I'm not looking at anything at JCPenney. I'll go to TJ Maxx into the discount, into the clearance section, love their clearance, like housewares and things like that. I don't shop in the regular parts of it because I want to get the most value for my money. So if I have a gift card, I want to 
get something that I can actually keep and hold on to and have a memory of this came from that. So I just don't spend uh, if it if it isn't already discounted. And then you find out, crazy coupon lady, you find out like how to read the tags, right? So you know if it's real discount or if it's going to go lower, like because there are color codes on things like that. So it's a game. You find out the rules of the game and you play it and you save. I mean, really, we could do all we could. I, I once this whole craziness passes, it would be very fun to go do this live with screen sharing, go into stores, right? Because um, it really is a game. It really is a game. And it's a game you win big at, guys, because you can start with just saving some money with coupons and then pairing that with Rakuten, pairing that with the site, with the apps, with surveys, with mystery shopping, with, with secret shopping, with Airbnb, with paying off your debt, with healthy hobbies that are inexpensive. And again, this game is one of those. So Chas, I'm going to turn to you. And I'm going to say, if you were to sum this up or give your best advice or something you really would want somebody to rock, walk a, away with, because you are a master at this. This is your whole life. You don't even think about doing it. You just do it because it's who you are. So what would you advise people? Okay. I do have a very easy summary, but before I give you that, I have to tag on a few things we said. Shameless self-promotion. If you want to be a mystery shopper, get in touch with me because I have referral codes for tons and tons of companies. <laughs> so I can give you the name of the company and I can also, you know, I'll get $10, you'll get $10 kind of thing. So there's that. The other thing with Rakuten, um, I believe that if you download their, I don't know if it's an app or what it is, but it's actually a little button in your browser. And if you're always using your browser with your button on it, any site you go to, it'll automatically tell you if there are savings there or not. So for me, that just makes it easier because there's one last step. So that would be one thing I would say as a tip. It's just like, slow down before you buy anything and just go look. Make sure you're using your browser with your Rakuten. Make sure you check the apps, like Beth said. Just don't allow yourself to buy anything for full retail price because you don't have to. But then compare prices too, because like we mentioned Wayfair, they have some really cool stuff but it can be expensive. So go get a coupon for Wayfair or go to Macy's and you might find out that they have something that Wayfair has, but it's already half the price. So even with a coupon on Wayfair, you're going to pay more than you would pay at Macy's. So don't assume because you have a coupon that you're going to be paying less than anywhere else. That's why you want to price shop and why Beth was talking about Aldi. So anyway, those are just some little side notes. My main takeaway or like my easy sum up what I have talked about is buy low and sell high. <laughs> uh, buy low and sell high. I love it. Uh, you know, one of the tools that we use with our program is a document. It's actually a, like a fill in the, a, the blank document and it's called the skinny on the money. There are skinny on the money exercises that you can do either in the location that you're part of or online uh, where we show you how much money you've saved with your eating plan and then how much money it is then making you. And if you are not purchasing stay on track or repeat track, stay on track is, is the main product with your ultra life 121, your Valora, your probiotic and repeat track is the uh, repeat pack. Sorry. Repeat pack is the ultra immune plus power pack uh, put on residual. So these are products you're going to use anyway. And when you put them on residual, meaning monthly, right, you're getting a savings. So that's saving money on product that's so good for you that you're going to purchase anyway. Make sure you talk to your coach about stay on track or repeat pack. And if you do not have a local location, then reach out to your online coach. So Nina, before we wrap up, I'm just going to ask you for your summary, if you would. Well, the summary is, boy, are those two women amazing. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't say that much, nothing like they do. Um, because I just, I, you know, at my age, you don't go out and spend as much. Um, so I love decorating. I love the visual. So I'm really picky about all of the visual. But I got to say, my hat's off to both Chas and Beth. They're amazing. 
I think this is great, great content, guys. Uh, we, I hope you are as excited about it as we were about sharing it. Again, what you've experienced with these gals is this is something they live. It's something they're absolutely fabulous at. And uh, you can go one way or the other. You can, expend, you can spend way more than you need to, or you can spend way less than you need to. And then you've either just saved the money or you can do with the money whatever you want like pay off your debt, pay off your house. So get the skinny on the money sheet. That's very specific to this program. Get the apps, get the sites, get all the help that you can get. Uh, make sure you get involved in stay on track and repeat pack because that just saves you money on product that you're using anyway. Reach out to your coach immediately about that. And ladies, thank you so much for all your time and all your effort and all your knowledge. I appreciate all of you guys. Bye-bye.